Hi Flosstube, this is Tina Frazier coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. Today is Sunday, December 30th at approximately 4.40 p.m. Eastern Time. I am coming to you with my last, likely last update and um, Flosstube video for 2018. As you know, 2019 starts on Tuesday and um, Hopefully everybody has had a really good Christmas break. I am off tomorrow and off on Tuesday, so this has been kind of a nice relaxing four day weekend for me so far. Um, we spent Christmas this last week at the in-laws house, um, the last family Christmas at the house before it is sold. Um, so hopefully that will happen sooner rather than later. Um, it was a good Christmas. We had a we had a blast. I'm actually going to insert a video, um, a little bit of a video snippet that I took trying to sit down and relax and stitch in front of the Christmas tree on Christmas Eve, late Christmas Eve night, um, while most of the house, most of the rest of the house went to bed. But um, I was trying to be really quiet in the video because um, the niece was. Her, bed, her bedroom is set up in the den and there's just a wood pocket door separating where the tree was and where she was sleeping with the baby. So um, I'm going to insert a little bit of a video clip here so you can actually see the tree. It's a very beautiful tree that we had at the in-laws house. But um, I was going to try and do a stitch with me video, like a live stitch with me video, but it just wasn't working. Um, I couldn't get the angle right. I just couldn't. It just wasn't feeling right. So I never really was able to do a, an actual stitch with me video. And also, it was really cold down there um, this week, and I wasn't able to do a final stitch with me video out on the front porch um, like I had earlier this summer. So unfortunately, I didn't get the last view of the. Um, the Ohio River um, as seen from my soon-to-be ex-in-law's front porch. Um, so anyway, it's a little bittersweet. Um, Rose the dog that my husband and I are now the owners of, um, she had a little difficult time dealing with being back at the house because most of the furniture has been um, sold and is out of the house now. So um, some of the rooms have been repainted and she walked, she got home and she was there she got out of the car and she was really excited cuz she knew where she was and she went to walk into the house and you could just tell the whole weekend she wasn't she didn't feel like she was she looked like she seemed like she didn't feel like she belonged there or that where she thought she was was no longer the same so it was it was a little hard it was a little hard to deal with um it's a little weird being in the house without all the furniture and all that and you know some of the rooms having been repainted a lot of the personal stuff is gone and it was just it was just different um it was a good christmas though we had about 10 people over for christmas dinner my husband fixed his first prime rib and it was really good i'm typically not the uh type of person to eat really rare meat. I like my beef more on the well side as opposed to like the medium medium rare or whatever. But it was really good. We had uh, you know, a couple of different veggies, two different types of potatoes. We had mashed potatoes and potato casserole. We had green bean casserole. We had a couple of pies for dessert and some other stuff for dessert. It was it was good. It was a good dinner. Um, the ten of us that were there, we, we just enjoyed each other's company as best we could. We opened up gifts and, you know, spent the afternoon just kind of hanging out. And then um, pretty much after dinner was over and things got cleaned up, things got put away, um, we started packing up the car and came home. And it was just a little bittersweet, but um, it was it was a good visit with everybody. We enjoyed it a lot. Hopefully all of you out there had had a, have, a, have had a really good Christmas and you're gearing up for the new year. My husband and I were planning on staying home for the new year and just kind of ringing it in together kind of quietly at home. We have some snacks and stuff uh, 
you know, ready for it. And we got we got a bottle of champagne to, to share. We may end up going over to a friend's house on Tuesday for some games in the afternoon. Um, some board game friends of ours kind of want to get together. So we'll kind of see how that plays out. So anyway, I have a couple of stitchy updates. So in the little Christmas video that um, I insert that I'll insert probably at the end you know I show you the 12 days of stitch miss um, caterpillar cross stitch design with the 12 days of 12 days of Christmas ornament balls all put together in the shape of a Christmas tree and I show you the partially gridded fabric that I have for that the 12 days of stitch miss stitch along um, I believe it was I believe it was a stitch mania stitch along started December 25th and my goal was to stitch on that because it was the theme of the 12 days of Christmas song um, spread out over the first 12 days of the month or first 12 days starting December 25th and my goal was my goal was to stitch on that um, for the 12 days of stitch miss stitch along well let me see if I can dig that out. Okay. So. Um, here is the 12 Days of Stitch Miss Stitch Along. Um, here's the pattern that I was going to be working on. You know, the first one appears, the partridge in a pear tree, two turtle doves, three French hens, etc., etc. So today is, um, let's see. Today is, bear with me just a minute. So the 25th, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, today would be day 6. So um, I would have, I would have had to start over here on number 6. 6 geese laying, and uh, <laughs> so today would have been day 6. Well here's my fabric. <laughs> As you can see I haven't even started. The 12 days of stitch miss so i am sorely behind on this um i did however partially grid this using sulky sliver thread um i have been reading posts um about gridding fabric using those water soluble blue ink pens give me just a minute um and the piece of fabric that I originally had for the um, 12 Days of Stitch Miss um, pattern, I had gridded about a year or so ago using the blue, <sighs> the blue water soluble ink pen, like this, this fine point mark begun pen. You can get these in the Joann's Notions um, area, um, you know, where they sell like the watermarking pens and pins and straight pins and, you know, Velcro, or well, as as the non trademark one trademark name for it is hook and loop, because um, you you know Velcro is tra trademarked, um, but uh, people have said that these pens are kind of a chemical and they can stain your fabric, and the blue marks can come out. Well, I removed all the blue marking from this fabric a few months back, and. Little did I know that the blue marking actually left a um, off-white grid, uh, a ghost, of, a ghost, an off-white ghost of the grid markings that I had put on it. And um, I was originally thinking, well, maybe I could just dye the fabric and, you know, kind of cover those up. The more I thought about it, though, the more I was like, you know what, I'll just go buy a uh, new piece of um, fabric for this piece because, well... Um, I can and um, I just start off new with um, some fabric some new fabric so I went and got a like a five dollar piece of um, even even weave for it and um, it's just white even weave that you can get at like Joann's or Michael's um, and so this that's what I did for it and um, on this on this fabric, I used sulky sliver thread. I went to um, I went to Joann's 
And it's this, it comes on a spool like this. It's a very fine uh, metallic kind of like thread that shows up. It almost looks like blending filament, but a lot of people use silky sliver, sliver thread, S-L-I-V-E-R, to grid um, a lot of their large heaven and earth design patterns and their full coverage patterns because um, you can stitch over it and around it. It's very thin. It's thinner than the actual fishing line or the easy, the easy grid stuff that you can get. Um, you can get this stuff called the Easy Count Guideline. This is basically just um, red um, fishing line weight. Um, I have this too, and I don't, I don't really care for it. Um, I have, I have used it on a couple of pieces. I don't really care for this um, because to me, I can see when I pull it out of my my fabric after I've stitched over it, I can actually see where this stuff used to be. The sulky sliver I found. Oh. Even though I haven't actually stitched over it, the silky sliver is a lot thinner than the um, the red f guideline, fishing guideline. Um, so I'm hoping that when I go to pull this out, it will um, it'll work a little better for me for gritting, and it won't um, it won't actually stain the fabric. So that is my hope with that. Um, Anyway, so I have not started the 12 Days of Stitch Miss like I originally thought I was going to start um, December 25th. So I don't know. This stitch along, they said you can start pretty much any day you want. I don't know if or when I'll get started on this. This might actually be one of my starts in January. I don't know yet. But um, anyway, I haven't started the 12 Days of Stitch Miss like I originally had thought I was going to. So this kind of goes, this is kind of um, probably going to, I'm not going to start it today or tomorrow. So this is going to be an, a 2019 start for me um, for next year. But one of the other things that I stitch on, I showed you um, some progress on the hands-on design January um, pattern from the year of celebrations. And um, so as you know, um, Hands on Design re released their Year of Celebration de design charts that were um, published back in 2014 in one of the magazines, one of the stitching magazines. And they published it as a full, full set of charts. Um, there's 14 charts, two of which are Canadian charts down at the bottom for July and November because Canada does not um, have the same holidays in July and November that the United States has. So, um, they, when they, uh, when they release these charts, they actually put the two Canadian charts in here for it. And, um, I am going, I am working on January and I just kind of want to show you, um, my progress so far. So, um, in the video before, when I, uh, when I was sitting by the Christmas tree, you can see I had some of the, um, these four snowflake or snowballs here and then some of the white border done and this uh, frost banner here but as you can see I've actually added some of the orange and some of the blue this might actually help I've added some of the orange and some of the blue for you yeah, that didn't really help but anyway um, let me go ahead and move this I'm going to slide my Sorry, you guys. I'm going to slide my light out. There we go. There we go. I'm going to slide my light out for it so you can actually get a, get a better idea. So I have some of the orange and some of the blue added. You can see the snowman is done. Um, most of the blue, I think, is done on this one, except for the... Um, there's another scarf up here above the word January. Um... So this is what it's going to look like um, when it's all done. So you can see I'm getting pretty close. I actually um, finished up most finished up the white yesterday. Started the blue and the purple and the pumpkin the the orange color yesterday. Um, I was working quite a lot on this, but um, my goal is to finish this up by by Tuesday. Um, I 
am going to attempt to um, kind of finish it the same similar way here. Um, my husband and I were at Michael's this afternoon, and one of the things I picked up there, they have these um, recollections. I think it's a oh, it's called Art Minds DIY tablescaping um, galvanized signs. So there's a six pack, and it's galvanized metal. It has a hanger top and a um, stand backing to it. There's six of them in the package. Um, what I figured I would do is um, kind of finish it, finish it the same way as on here and kind of magnetize them to the back of this. My goal is to, um, I have six of these, so I may end up painting four of them um, for each of the seasons, like one white, one, you know, kind of spring color, one kind of um, fall color, and one another one winter. I don't know what I'll do yet. Um, with six six of these but um, my goal is to magnetize this part the stitch part and I may initially I may just use like um, scrapbooking paper or something to kind of make a, a, a bigger outline a bigger background for it um, but I want to magnetize it and hang this up on the wall so I might add like you know get some specialty ribbon and make like little bow magnets and you know embellishments and stuff but my goal is to use this to magnetize these um, these designs and put them on here um, this package is six I think was regularly 15 bucks um, at Michael's um, they were on sale I think for like 12 bucks so I just went ahead and bought a package of them they have big square ones with hangers I didn't my husband said this this gives a little more um, aesthetic because it has a little different different size I can put it this way put it this way I can put it this way you know this way whatever and he said I probably enjoy these a little better so um, that is what I'm planning on doing with this um, hopefully I'll finish the stitching up I might end up just folding it up and sticking it on one of these like putting it on with magnets and just kinda hanging it up until I uh, actually fully finish it but my goal is to use these to magnetize this and I'm probably just gonna hang this somewhere up on my wall you know add bows and just little little trinkets magnets and stuff to it and if I find some cute magnets or something you know for each of the months maybe I can just put magnets on here too but that is my goal um, I have a plan for this and so that's that's where I've gotten stitchy wise so there are many my the other goal I have for this is once I finish January um, and hopefully I'll have it finished by tomorrow um, I'm gonna work on work on it some tonight and try and get and get it mostly finished so I can have it um, sort of sort of ready to go on Tuesday but um, I'm gonna be stitching February's which is down there in the bottom sometime in January so my goal is to have these mini finishes throughout um, 2019 so hopefully this will be the stitching on this will be finished by midnight tomorrow night <laughs> and uh, um, so I'll keep you posted on where I am with this I may actually do a New Year's Day happy New Year's thing but um yeah so that's where I'm at with this um so one of the other things that I'm gonna do I am I'm not really participating in any stitch alongs at the moment, some active stitch alongs. I know there's many, 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 many coming up. Um, I don't know if you remember one of my other videos, I have listed um, stitch alongs that I have found for um, 2019. Um, this is my 2019 passion planner. This is my planner that I've been, that I use for um, my life this kind of has this is my life book life in a book basically I carry my planner with me to work to and from work and everything like that um, this is the 2019 one and you can see here I have my 2018 passion planner book um, I have have been doing kind of memory planning in here like using washi tape and stickers well that won't help you out but you can see like I kind of color code all the weeks with everything going on that's what I do during the week so this is kind of one of the things that I've been doing too um so this last week in my uh, 2018 planner kinda looks a little bit like this this is Christmas week this week so far 
And my goal this week is to, um, my goal today and tomorrow is to kind of go through the 2018 wrap up. Um, at the end of every month in the planner, they have um, these questions that you answer. They're called the monthly reflections. And so this is what, these are the questions that we would answer. I'm a little behind in doing my monthly reflections. Um, I have quite a few months, so they haven't done anything. And then um, they also have questions for the end of your reflection, which I haven't filled out yet either. So I'm going to be spending part of tonight and tomorrow kind of going over my 2019 year or 2018 year and um, do the year of reflections. It was a long, it was a long year this year. It was kind of a bad year. I had three people in my family die. Um, I had a friend who was diagnosed with breast cancer in November. Um, had kind of an update, you know. Um, she's had two tre chemo treatments and she has lost her hair and we just it's just been a very rough year another family member who has been dealing with breast cancer also found out she had the type of cancer that was that's fed by estrogen and unfortunately for her sorry my camera's shaking unfortunately for her she had um, ovarian su surgery um, uh, a while back to remove her ovaries because her ovaries are, you know, were producing the estrogen that was feeding the cancer that she had. Well, she found out <laughs> about two or three weeks ago that uh, they didn't get all the ovary out. And, uh, well, her cancer was still being fed by estrogen produced by the partial ovary that she had. So she went in Christmas Eve. <laughs> and had the rest of her ovary mo removed. She's doing fine. She went actually went home Christmas Eve, but you know, we have, you know, amongst everything else going on, there's just it's just crazy. I'm going to turn this off for now. But yeah, it's just it's just been a crazy crazy year. So anyway, in my new planner, um not only do I have um all of that, I have um my passion roadmap this is all the stuff that I want to do. I will turn this back on so you can see. And I saw my passion row map to fill out. Um, then I have um, some goals to set for 2019. Um, here's some of the stickers that I've put at the beginning of my planner. Just some of the quotes that I put in there. And then, um, so for, here is my January layout for 2019. So this is what I have in my planner so far. And then the first week in January, this is kind of what it looks like so far. And this starts tomorrow. So this is my first week in my planner. Um, for stitch alongs for 2019, um, this kind of looks messy right now, but this is all the stitch alongs that I have come across. Stitch Mania, full coverage, fanatics, all kinds of stuff. It's lists and lists and lists and lists and lists. So part of my planning for this coming week is to kind of figure out what stitch alongs and stuff I want to start. There are many, 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 many. Um, stitch, stitch Talk. Um which is a Facebook group that was created by Portia Parcher. Um, she does a lot of heaven and earth design stitching. Um, she is known for um, the uh, 90 day and 100 day uh, heaven and earth design stitch alongs and challenges that she's, she's been starting. And this last year I participated in the, hundred, the second or the 100 days um, heaven and earth design stitch along. And it pushed me really hard. I worked on Hunter's Moon by Allison Spokes, and it pushed me really hard. Well, she's starting another one uh, for 2019 called Stitch Around the World, and there's several different legs to the stitches. So, like, the first leg is, well, I have it in here, actually. Um, but basically, you s stitch a certain number of stitches, and um, each stitch is a different leg. So you can see here, 
the first leg is 470 stitches, which gives you, goes from London to Paris. So essentially, you pick a project, and um, you uh, you pick a heaven and earth design project, and you um, start stitching. And whenever you reach those stitches, you mark off that leg. And the total total stitches, there's over 54, like almost 54,000 stitches um, in this stitch along. The longest leg is um, New York to Queenstown Cove, which is 15,006 stitches. That's the longest stretch in here. But um, once you... Once you complete those number of stitches in your project, you um, post your progress pic in yeah, on your um, original post in the Facebook group or in the event for the um, for the stitch along. And um, at the end of the year, you know it's a, it's a goal to reach. So right now, this is really the only um, stitch along that I'm really participating in, and I'm using. Um, Four Seasons by Jessica Yerka as my um, Stitch Around the World stitch along for this. Let me get this out for you. Many of you know this pattern. It's the Four Seasons by Jessica Yerka. Um, and here's where I'm starting. So, this is the um, lower left corner where um, winter and spring meet down here. So that is where I will be starting. Hopefully I'll get this back on my Q-snaps um, on Tuesday and put some stitches in it starting Tuesday. But um, my goal is to, <laughs> my goal with this project, I've said this before, is I'm going to be working in the winter area until spring comes around. I'll move up until up into spring, um, like March or April. And then hopefully I'll get enough of spring done, move into summer for the summer, move into fall for the fall, and back down into winter. And I may be able to finish this. I'm not sure. Um, it really depends. There are... <laughs> And get this out. There are well, it's a 525 by 522 stitches piece, 522 wide by five or 525 wide by 522 high. Um, there's 28,842 DMC 032 Krynic or 032. Um, Blending filament stitches, 28,842, if that tells you anything. Um, there's a lot in here. It doesn't have a full stitch count, but there, there's a lot. Um, anyway, if you multiply 525 by 522, let me do that really quick for you. 525 times 522. There are 274,050 stitches in this piece. 274,050 stitches in this piece alone. So, I am doing the Stitch Around the World for this one this year. Um, this is the only the only um, stitch along so far I have committed to. I'll be working on um, some of the other typical ones like um, Mill Hill Mondays. Mill Hill Mondays are going to continue in 2019. There is also um, full coverage on the 5th, um, where you work on a full coverage piece on the 5th. Well, duh. Um, you know, I'll be working on this. This is just the DMC floss colors. Don't worry about it. Um, I did start this piece for posterity on November 25th. Um, bottom left corner where winter and spring meet. And I started this for Sunday high tea in November. All right. Um, but I'll be, uh, working on, um, Mill Hill Monday probably at various points throughout the year. I'll be doing Sunday high tea from, um, uh, Friday off the grid. 
the Friday Off the Grid Facebook group with Carolyn Hoff. Um, there's Sunday High Tea. There's the uh, Year of Starts where every 19th of the month you pick a new start. I may be doing that a couple of times this year. Um, I don't know if I'll be participating in Stitch Mania. I got a little ways to think about that, and I don't know if I'll be doing Stitch Mania this year or not. Um, that's that big, um, crazy time in May when you, you know, do 31 starts or whatever, whatever you decide to do. My drink of choice today is Coke. But yeah, um, so I'm just now kind of starting to figure out my plans. Um, I was going to do the 12 days of Stitchmas. Um, you'll see, let me show you my weekly spread here. Um, how I've got it. So you see, I put um, some of the stitch alongs going on each day. Um, so you see, like, Saturday the 5th, I have um, full coverage on the 5th and stuff like that. Um, the 12 Days of Heaven and Earth Design. There is also that going on right now where you stitch, um, you know, it. It initially started out as being 12 Heaven and Earth Design starts. I thought initially I was going to do that. It started on the 26th of December and goes until January 7th. But again, <laughs> I haven't done that either. So even though I have them written in my planner, the 12 Days of Stitchments and the 12 Days of Heaven and Earth Designs, um, I'm not really participating in it um, actively as of yet. Um, but, uh, so just in my planner, you know, I have little trackers down here for some of this stuff that I want to do, like journaling, um, crochet, cross-stitch, diamond painting, uh, ocarina practice. I have an ocarina. I've been trying, wanting to learn to play it, so I need to get my ocarina out this year and start to play it. I had, um, started to, you know, do some things earlier this year and learn to play it, um, but I kind of let it go. And I need to get that back out. But, like, also in here is, like, reading. Um, and then some of the video games, like Black Desert. My three, my Switch. We just got a Switch for, um, right after Thanksgiving. Pokemon Go, Ingress, Geocaching, Working Out, um, you know, that kind of thing. So I have the tracker for that. Um, yeah. Other than that, um, that is all I've got. Um, so, my husband, as you know, I also, this last year, I went to my first cross-stitch retreat. I went to, I'm going to turn this off again, I went to Camp Got a Stitch, which is hosted by my local needle workshop, Cross My Heart, here in Columbus. And every November, they have a stitching retreat. Well, this year, they're going back, in 2019, they're going back to Berlin, Ohio, which is up in Amish country, for the, the next retreat. They haven't really announced any dates yet. They haven't finalized any of the um, <sighs> reservations with the hotel that we're going to, that um, they're host, hosting it at this year. But um, my husband has really encouraged me to go again because I had so much fun. And I'm really glad I went this year because I really did need that downtime. So he has really encouraged me to um, go again. So I am one of the other plans for 2019 is for me to um, attend Camp Got a Stitch again. Um, as you all know, too, earlier this year I was I was on the waiting list for StitchCon, and I was actually sent an invoice. Unfortunately, at the time I was sent the invoice for StitchCon 2019, I couldn't couldn't really afford to go, um, couldn't afford to pay the, the thing. So I forfeited my chance to go to StitchCon in 2019. I am on the wait list still for StitchCon 2020. There is a slim chance that I might get invoiced again for um, StitchCon 2019, but I don't think I'll be able to go. I'm probably going to look at, if I do get invoiced for StitchCon 2020, I am probably going to pay and go to that as well but um, 
I am really looking forward to being able to go to Camp Goddess Stitch again, and hopefully I won't make miss another Camp Goddess Stitch because it was a lot of fun. You know, the fact that I got to meet Vanna Pfeiffer and just, you know, hang out with hang out with people that I haven't hung out with for a while should be a lot of fun. The other thing is, too, I'm really hoping to get to some of the Wednesday Stitch Nights again at um, Cross My Heart. Um, the Wednesday Stitch Nights are a lot of fun. The ladies are really nice. And I get to see one of my really good and dear friends, Vicki, and her daughter, Deanna. Um, we kind of met through Cross Stitch at work. I had a piece that I had taken to work with me to show some people and I was walking out and she was sitting there waiting for her ride and she asked to see it and so we started talking and we started hanging out at lunch and then we started stitching together and we she got us into board games and it all just kind of blossomed from there but I've known her for about 15 or 20 years and um she's a really good stitching friend and just good friend in general so um wednesday nights you know uh, sometimes i'll pick her up from work or her daughter will bring her and we'll sit sit and stitch and enjoy each other's company we don't get to do that very often um just because of our schedules and you know she lives on the east side of town and it's just really hard for she doesn't drive so it's really hard for um us to just get together but anyway so next couple of days i'm gonna finish planning get some of my um some of my goals and everything set for 2019 so I'll be working on that um, I've got a journal um, I decided a couple of years ago that I wanted to start journaling and writing down my thoughts so I have this journal here um, so you can see I've been writing I've been writing in a journal my last entry in my journal was um, October 23rd so I have some updates to do for my journal um, my goal in 2019 is to actually kind of try and write something in it every day if not every couple of days definitely once a week um, I need to get back into this I was really hoping to do this um, daily but uh, you know when you're busy and you kind of have to pick and choose um, I did a little diamond painting the other day. I haven't pulled, pulled out my diamond painting in a little while. I'm still working on the Princess Mononoke one. And um, I'm still just over halfway done. Um, I'm not going to pull it out and show you. I can do that. I can do that a little bit later. My plan is um, sometime this week or next week to do a diamond paint with me video. And just kind of sit again and stitch and uh, paint, with, paint with you. I have... Um, a couple of tags that I want to do. Kyle Reckemeyer, Stitching with Sound. He has put out a couple of tags or some questions for a couple of tags that I'm thinking about answering on a Stitch with Me or Diamond Paint with Me video or both. Um, so that may be coming in a couple of weeks. Um, also, as far as my floss tube goes, I am kind of toying with the idea of doing little little updates as I have them and putting them together in one big video for you for the week. I also thought about just maybe doing like little quick live videos just like hey I'm here blah 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 blah. Um, but I don't know if the live format would really work because I kind of like to um, I would kind of like to be able to edit the videos and stuff like that so I'm thinking maybe doing like little snippets here and there and like once a week uploading what I've got um, and if I don't have anything just doing a quick video showing you my updates. Um, so I don't know if my format will change for my floss two videos in 2019, but I may end up going to a little bit of a vlog style, kind of like Carolyn, um, from off the grid needle arts has for her, um, weekly updates or stitcherista, um, Danielle, um, you know, they, they kind of do it vlog style where they give you updates each day. Um, I don't know if I'll do that or not. Um, so we shall see um some of our plans for 2019 besides me like going me going to camp goddess stitch and stuff like that my mom in california hopefully will be coming to visit for a week or two um she is gonna look at putting my dad and some my stepdad in some respite care he um she is basically his 24 7 caregiver and through the va out in california she can get um like uh, up to four weeks of respite care every every I don't know if it's every calendar year or every rolling 
calendar year or every rolling year, um, but she can get up to um, basically about a month respite care where they will put him in a facility to care for him while she just goes and takes care of life. And so she's going to take advantage of that this year and come out and visit. I think that would be great. I don't know when that'll happen. We're talking maybe um, earlier rather than later. But my husband and I, as of right now, we are planning on going to Christmas in California. We were out in California two or three years ago for Christmas, and we're going to go out again this year, this coming year. Since, you know, the in-laws are no longer with us, and... Um, I just haven't had a chance to spend Christmas with my family in, in a couple of years. So um, our plan is to go out to California for Christmas this year. Um, also, I just got notification this last week or two that um, my high school class my high school class of 1989 from Whitney High School in California, um, they're planning their 30th class reunion for sometime in August this year. I don't know if I'll be able to make it out to California for my 30th class reunion, but, um, you know, I may be able to spend a couple extra days and just go out there for a quick trip. Um, my husband probably won't be going with me on that trip, but, um, you know, if I do go, it'll probably just be for a short trip for a couple of days so I can go to the reunion and just say hi to everybody. But we are definitely, hopefully, going out for Christmas this year to California together. And also, um, my great uncle passed away in March this year. Um, he was my grandfather's brother. They live, he and his wife live in Evanston, Wyoming. If you're out in Evanston, Wyoming, or if you're in that area and you stop in Evanston and you see the Phillips RV park, um, kind of on the east end of town near I-80, if you see the Phillips RV Park, that is the RV park that has been in my family, or my grandfather's family, for years, like since the 1940s or something. It started out as, as the Phillips Motel. They've since torn down most of the motel. The only part of the original building that exists is the office for the RV park. That is the only original part of the building that still ex original part of the original motel that still exists today. But it's an RV park. It's called the Phillips RV Park, and it's in Evanston, Wyoming. So if you happen to drive through Evanston, Wyoming, and you look, you need a place to sleep, and you you're towing your RV or you have tent or whatever, um, start by the Phillips RV Park. They'll take care of you, and say hi to Darla, and see if Joyce is working the front desk. Joyce is my great aunt. Um, my husband and I, we had been kind of toying with the idea of going out to see them because I'd really like him to meet. I would have really loved for him to have met my great uncle, Ran. Unfortunately, Ran passed away um, in March after heart surgery due to complications. Um, it was a little unexpected, um, but he was, you know, he was getting up there in age. And um, so my great aunt Joyce has offered any time that, you know, we can make it to please stop in and visit. She would love to have us. So um, I hope I hope at some point in time to go out there sooner rather than later. So we may actually be making a trip for that um, this year. That is my hope. I really hope to go out and see her um, because that'll also give us a chance to go out and visit my uh, grandparents' gravesite. My grandmother on my mom's side, um, she grew up in Evanston, Wyoming. Um, my grandfather grew up in Evanston, Wyoming. My grandma and grandpa were um, high school sweethearts. They kind of parted ways after high school. They both got remarried. Um, my grandma, you know, went to California. Uh, my real grandfather passed away when I was seven. Um, yeah, they got divorced when I was really real little or before I was even born. And then my grandma got back in contact with her high school sweetheart, my grandpa, my grandpa Bert, um, and they got married, moved to Cheyenne, Wyoming, where they lived ever since I was two years old. So I spent a lot of time in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and I got to know his side of the family, Ran and Joyce, who ran the Phillips Motel and Phillips RV Park in Evanston, where they all grew up together. 
I got to know that side of the family pretty well. So, um, yeah, I, my, my goal is to take Dylan out there with me because I think he'd really like it. Plus, it would give me a chance to show him the University of Wyoming in Laramie, where I went to school for three years, and some of the um, locations in Cheyenne where I spent many, 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 many years growing up. Um, every summer I was spent in Cheyenne. Um, I went to college in, in Laramie, which is 50 miles away. My my grandfather passed away in 2008, so his house was sold in 2008 or 2009. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of family stuff in that area that I'd really like to show him. Plus, I'd really like to see my grandparents' grave sites in Evanston because they were buried in plots in Evanston, Wyoming, where the, their family is buried. So that would be that would be just a really great trip I think for us to take hopefully that'll happen in 2019 if not as early in 2020 as we can swing it um, and hopefully we can see Joyce before anything else happens um, you know she's older and I just I would just really like to see her she's a she's a tiny little woman really nice sweetheart heart of gold and I would just really like Dylan to meet her he hasn't had a chance to meet many people on my side of the family so if I can give him that chance that would be great um, other than that we really don't have any plans um, I have lots of new projects that I want to start stitching in 2019 so um, yeah at this point in time I really don't have any set plans stitching wise other than I'm doing the um, stitch around the world for um, heaven and earth design for this four seasons by Jessica Kirka and um, I'm doing the hands-on design year of celebrations once a month um, so in January I'm going to be doing February in February I'm going to be doing March i once I finish one I may actually start the next one to kind of get a head start but my goal is to have all of them finished by the end of November so I actually have something to hang on my walls <laughs> but uh, other than that, I really don't have much. Hey, I rambled on for 45 minutes. <laughs> wow. That was a lot, a lot of stuff. All right. Anyway, I hope you guys had, had a great Christmas. I don't know if I'll be submitting or um, updating you on anything tonight or tomorrow night um, before the end of the year. I, I may do a, just a really quick live um, or a really quick Happy New Year update. Um, really quick overnight tomorrow night. I may not. I don't know. I don't know what my plans are just yet. But anyway, if I don't talk to you or if I don't post anything, I hope everybody has a happy new year. 2019 is just right around the corner. I hope you're getting all your stitchy plans together. I hope you're making all your personal goals, your everything like that. Um, I don't really have any personal goals, speaking of that, um, other than, you know, eating better. Um, I'd like to lose weight, but I'm not going to put, you know, I need to lose 100 pounds. I do need to learn, lose 100 pounds, but, you know, by eating better and drinking more water, cutting out some of the, you know, as much soda as I've been drinking recently, um, just cutting back on a lot of stuff, I think I'll lose, lose some weight and get a little better. Um, I need to... Be a little more mindful of like blood pressure and blood sugar and all that stuff this year. So I'm gonna um, just try and just try and keep better eye out. Having Rose the dog will um, get me out of the house a little more because we have to take her on walks. So I'm hoping to go on more walks. I'm hoping to walk more. Um, I had a goal in 2018 of doing some 5K walks and stuff like that this year. That didn't happen. So maybe. Um, Maybe, who knows, I'll get into a couple of 5Ks cases next year, and I'll need to get out and walk. Um, that would be kind of nice. I think I would like to do that. So if anybody wants to get out there and walk with me, who's in the Columbus area, let me know. <laughs> Maybe we can go on a 5K walk and make it a stitchy, a stitchy walk. I don't know if that's even possible. So anyway, I hope you guys all have a happy new year. Um, we'll see you sometime soon. It may be New Year's Day. It may be a little before that, but it may not be for a few days. Um, so anyway, take care. Um, relax. Be safe. Because I know, you know, New Year's is uh, it's a time to celebrate, right? Don't drink and drive. If you're going to drink, 
get a designated driver. That's my little PSA for, for you all. Um, my husband and I are going to stay home, so that shouldn't be an issue for me. Um, I have some champagne. It'll be good. Um, stuff like that. But anyway, don't drink and drive. Be safe. Don't shoot your guns on New Year's Eve, please. You don't want to kill somebody celebrating the New Year. Don't, don't shoot your guns in the air. It's bad. Just don't do it. Um, take care. Keep on keeping on. And uh, we'll see you in the new year. Thanks a lot, everybody. Take care now. Goodbye. Merry Christmas, everybody. This is Tina Frazier, coming to you from Williamstown, West Virginia, 12.52 p.m. Um, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Sitting by the tree and um, just sitting some before bed. <laughs>